afternoon, Rollies. Welcome to today's core series session. The fact that I'm on your screens right now and not seeing you in person is part of the reason why today's topic is so relevant. Yes, we've all heard about working from home, an emerging hybrid work model, and many of the challenges around this. After all, this is the very reason why we crafted the course series. However, it may not seem like it, but it's been almost two years since we were forced into a new way of work. And some may argue that it's been changing ever since. Today, we're going to take a look at what some call the fifth industrial revolution we find ourselves entering and how the seamless integration of people technology interaction has become a necessity in today's world of work. Today's speaker, Dr. Natasha Winkler Titus, whom you may recognize from previous course series session, has deep rooted experience in this topic, researching and teaching on this, as well as being a co author on the recently launched book focusing on the changing world of work and the impact on profession, on the profession rather, of work psychology. Dr. Natasha is also the founder and curator of Signifier, a body of associates aiming to make a change significant for individuals and organization. She serves as a full-time faculty member of the University of Stellenbosch Business School, teaching and researching in leadership and organizational behavior. Today, she'll be sharing her insights and some tips on how we can navigate the new space we find ourselves in. Welcome, Dr. Natasha, and thank you for joining us. We look forward to your insights and over to you. Thank you so much, Andile, and thanks again for having me back. And uh, I surely hope that all the topics we've spoken about at um, in this call, course series, um, you will start appreciating how it will influence and come together in today's talk as well. Um, as Andile said, this is a little pet project of mine. Um, I love this space. I believe uh, technology needs to be fused with our lives to make our lives flow better um, and not just be seen as something that I have to do on the side. Um, I've been working in a, in a hybrid way of working for close on 15 years of my professional life. Um, so I do encourage organizations and individuals to not embrace technology, because I think we've all done that. We don't really have much of a choice, but rather to, to be ahead of technology and, and see how you can fuse it. That is all that the fifth industrial revolution is about. It's about fusing our biology, our psychology, and the te technological development around us to make our lives better. Um, so today I'm going to talk a little bit about what this thing is called um, a hybrid work model, uh, things to consider, uh, because as we're moving into the future, most organizations and role as well need to think about how do we go forward. Remember what we've been doing in terms of remote work is not necessarily a hybrid work model, and it was also a survival tactic during COVID. Another, a number of elements has influenced how that worked out. But now we should look at the future. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about hybrid work. Uh, but before we get into it, let me just share my screen here. Um, let me just see if I can get a heads up that I'm sharing the right screen. Maybe I'll ask Josh or Shade that you're seeing my Kahoot screen. We are indeed, Natasha. Perfect. So I want to invite everybody that's on the call to play along with us. We're going to start quickly with a seven question quiz. Um, there's no right or wrong answer. Um, I want you to answer truthfully and therefore I want you to put a nickname. You don't have to put your real name in. Just put a nickname. So um, minimize your Zoom screen and open your browser and click www.kahoot.it and it will then ask you for a game pin and the game pin is 1304962. So I am waiting for you and I see Amma has joined. But we have about 82 people on. So I would definitely like to see more participants. Awesome. Cams, there, Spike and Tians. I will give you a few minutes. So as I said, Remember, you have to learn to work with technology here. So you can also use your 
um, cell phone and open a browser, go into kahoot.it and enter the game pin 1304962. Excellent, it's getting exciting. We've got 19 players, 23. I appreciate maybe not all 85 might join us, but let's see how close we can get. We even have a goddess and some sunshine. Awesome. I'll give it another few seconds. Now we're not gonna do, um, for some of you that know Kahoot, it is a gaming platform um, and we can get quite competitive and there's always a price, but I'm gonna use it slightly different today. So there's no right or wrong answer per, per se. I want you to answer truthfully. There's only gonna be true or false questions. So at each question, I just want you to answer um, is this for yourself personally? Is the statement true or is it false? I still see quite a few people coming in. So let me give it another 10 seconds. So remember, just true or false and for you personally. Don't think about bro, don't worry about bro. It is for you personally and your preferences and how your experience at the moment. Alrighty, uh, in the interest of time, I'm going to have to start. Uh, I think we've got a good representation. At least, at least, most half of us are on the game. Alrighty, there we go. Okay, for yourself. True or false? Do you currently work remotely? Remotely means you do not sit at a client site or in an office. And the most likelihood for most of you, it'll be at home, in a coffee shop, uh, in a library maybe, wherever you can find some power. So 26 of you are working remotely. Don't worry about the scores. You have the opportunity to virtually meet with others in your work setup for casual conversations, not for meetings and seminars and trainings, but for a little bit of fun and socializing. Talk about other things other than work. So if you have that opportunity, who's true? Okay, so more or less split. Some of you have that opportunity and some of you don't. Third question, I have autonomy over how and when I do my work. If there's no rules for you around, you have to clock in or log in at a certain time and out at a certain time, or you are monitored through different technology. Are you behind your desk? Okay, a good split there. Some feel that they don't have autonomy and some do. Question four, my supervisor cares about my well-being. Is that true or false for you personally? Very encouraging to see a high number of you are experiencing support from your, your supervisors. Question five, I frequently feel isolated. So when you work remotely all by yourself behind the screen, do you feel isolated or do you feel connected? False. It is so good. And I, th I would think being on this call makes you feel connected. Second last, since working remotely, I feel more productive because productivity and how we work is closely linked. 
for me personally, I have my best productivity when I work at home because I'm an extrovert. So when I'm in the office, I get distracted very quickly. Oh, so the majority of people feel more productive. It would be interesting to know what your actual performance and what your boss is about that. And then lastly, in future, I prefer to work. So choose one for us. Do you always want to work remotely? Sometimes remotely, always in the office or in a hybrid work model? What is your dream? Okay, so the majority of you would prefer to work in a hybrid work model, um, but there are also some people that want different things. And it's important to note this because we, we are not all the same. I think that is, yes, that is our poll. It is not a competition, so we're not going to look at winners or losers. Um, so let's talk about hybrid work models today. You should be seeing my slides coming up. If you don't, just give me a shout. So I'm specifically going to talk, I'm not going to talk about everything in hybrid or remote work, but how to implement and optimize hybrid work strategies. Okay. And again, remote working, or let's rather call it hybrid working, because I think we all know what remote working is. Hybrid working is not necessarily a new concept, uh, but it's certainly owning the conversation right now. Everywhere, even every second webinar is about hybrid working. So what is this? Is it a fad or do we think there's a future? Um, the 2021 Work Trends Annual Report says that the next generation disruption in operating or business models is going to be and potentially is already hybrid work. The question is, is this true and is it relevant for South Africa? Before we were hit by a pandemic and there was a harsh lockdown initially, only about 4% of knowledge workers, that's people that can qualify to work remotely, only 4% um, of such workers in South Africa identified as a remote worker. During the initial lockdown stage, we saw that number flipping up to about 40%. Um, and that was more, more or less because we were forced into that situation. So remote work was introduced and it's broadened this term and this experience to a lot more workers who suddenly realize that there are different ways of doing your work. So it's given people more flexibility, uh, in some instances, even creating different types of jobs and new opportunities in new locations as well. But there's also been challenges. So some teams have become very siloed. They, they, the digital exhaustion has been on the rise. Um, and whether this is real and sustainable is still to be seen. So in this talk, I'm going to assume that remote working is not going to stay at 40%. I do think that's a bit of an exaggeration, especially for the South African context. But we're definitely not going down to 4%. Um, there's definitely an upward trend and an expectation, especially from knowledge workers or office workers, um, that those who qualify would want to work more in a, in a remote or a hybrid type of style. So, so the talk today is, if we go re, um, a hybrid model, how do you optimize uh, hybrid work strategies? I will then consider, first of all, why would you consider a hybrid work model? Then we'll go to what is a hybrid model and how do you optimize for hybrid work? So research, as Andile has mentioned, uh, not only have I lived this way, um, I optimize technology and I infuse it in my life um, to create more flow. So not only have I lived through this and I've got my own lived experience, but it is a space that I teach in and I've been doing quite a bit of research in this space. And the research is showing us that the em employees do want more flexibility. Not everybody necessarily wants to work from home. 
but not everybody wants to rush back to the office. So there is a, a greater de demand for more flexibility and autonomy insofar our work lives and our careers and, and the flow between our work and our personal life um, and how we manage that. So in short, we want the best of both worlds. Um, as leaders start recognizing what is possible, we have this once in a lifetime opportunity now to just pause and reset and, and think about what is a hybrid work model and if possible, can we do it? Can we get it right? And will it make our lives more purposeful, more productive, more flexible, and just basically more in flow? Um, obviously, when we were in the lockdown, there has been a lot of research done. Um, but I always caution around the research that was done during 2020 and even 21, because this, the context was extremely compounded because we weren't just in a lockdown and we weren't just working remotely. We also were fighting for our lives through a pandemic. So we had a lot of other practicalities around us that we had to deal with. So I tend to look at research pre the pandemic and what do we know about um, remote work and hybrid work and, and how to make it work. But um, a number of the, the consulting houses are looking at the current trends and EY found that more than 78% of employers now are looking at how do we change our work models. You, probably would have seen in the news a number of articles um, coming out with decisions and, and consulting houses pronouncing statements statements like the two day in the office work week etc the thing however that I do want to caution is we have to know what is around us but we have to do what is right for our context for you personally but also for the organization um, so I always caution with consulting houses for example we have always worked that way. We've always had a two days in the office rule anyway, because most of the time we were on a client site or we were traveling. Um, so we have to be careful which trends and which uh, um, fads we follow. It is certainly something that's topical that is being spoken about and that employers are looking at now. So now that we know uh, why would we want to look at a hybrid work model? Let's just be clear on what that is. What are we talking about when we look at what a work model is? So work models determine how a particular organization functions on a daily basis. So basically, it combines who works, who are the workers. Remember, we don't just have full-time employees. You may have contractors, you may have service providers, you may have gig workers. Um, one thing that the new world of work and the fourth industrial revolution has also made us more or sensitize us to is that there are a lot more workers than we appreciate uh, in organizations. So we have to look at our full value chain and look at every individual that does some level of work in the value chain, whether they're an employee or not. Um, so who's doing the work? Then we also have to focus on what work do they do? There's certain things, if you work with machinery or technology that you can't carry to your house, you have to do on site. So what is the work that you do and what level of integration, collaboration, uh, process dependency are there. Um, we also need to do, um, what do you, we, we need to think about what do you need to do your work. Um, and then this gives us clarity on where can we do that work uh, more optimally. So if you really think about it, hybrid work models are not that new. Uh, in some way or the other, we've always had to deal with some level of hybrid work consideration. Um, think, for example, flexi time or when you have to have a compressed work week or some organization have to run a 24 hour production. So they have to introduce shift work. Uh, there might be part time schedules or job sharing. Um, and all of these things are what a form of hybrid working. Um, the definition. So the time doctor consultant says remote workers are expected to come in the office at some point or the other, but the majority of the time they work from home or another location. Um, 
others distinguish between three types. So you can have office first, remote first, or office occasional type workers. In an office first model, the office is the designated place for working. So there might be a remote work policy offers, offered and people have opportunities to work remotely, but the majority of employees will continue working from an office and a small percentage will work remotely. A remote first model implies that employees work remotely most of the time, but the office remains open. So those that feel they will focus better or they would work more productively can come into the office. Furthermore, certain types of work or if you have to work in collaboration with your colleagues, you preferably want to be in an office space. Um, so the office becomes a resource where things can be done. You can take a meeting or just collaborate and socialize. And then lastly, and the science of office occasional is employees are required to come to the office for a few days a week. So there's a policy like two days a week and a rotational basis, or there's some kind of uh, roster or schedule. Um, and companies can basically choose how strict or how loose do you want that policy um, and the office work days to be implemented. Um, so in such a scenario, most of, most of the employees will live locally, but they still choose to divide their time between an office or in a home environment and, and freelancers can work anywhere from their uh, bedrooms, their houses, a, a coffee shop, a library or wherever, even a client site. Um, EY that I just mentioned, for example, they just put out a pro proclamation saying most of its people will normally spend at least two days a week uh, at the office. Um, or two days a week working remotely, and the rest of the time they will be either in the office or at a client site, uh, which to me is kind of what they've always done in consulting anyway. Um, and also be careful to compare apples with apples. And again, as I said, it's important to see what is the practices out there, not necessarily best practice, but the practice, what are people doing? What are the pros and cons? What can we learn from certain experiences? But always, Con, uh, contain it to your own context. What is the best model? What is the best approach for, for your company? And then again, for your personal circumstances. Um, in terms of research, we know that hybrid work arrangement, which is a mix of um, in-person and remote work, uh, provides flexible working ar arrangements, providing flexibility in terms of the place of work, the time of work, and the continuity. In other words, uh, how you would break up your activity. It also uh, includes in the definition, the equipment, the tools, the resources that you need um, to complete a task and the nature of the interaction that is required. If your work is very much focused and you could do quite a bit of the process on your own, it is easier to work remotely. But if you have continuous collaboration or intersecting points in your process with others, you have to think about how you make that work. So hybrid work could also see some in the office, some dialing in, and we all work together in that way. Um, for me at this point in time, that is the preferred option. Um, so some of the questions you have to ask yourself is, what type of business are you leading? Does your organization purpose align better to an office-centric or human-centric design? And before you jump to, oh, we are all human-centric, go and think clearly about it, okay? If you, if you wanna drive a work experience that provide consistency, you're probably more an office-centric design over flexibility. Now. Think about how the nature of the work that you do or the service that you deliver. Does the client expect consistency of you? That doesn't mean you anti-human centric. It just means your reality and your context is looking for consistency. Or do you enable serendipitous or intentional collaboration? 
Um, and then lastly, do you prefer visible leadership over empathy-based leadership? And there is a difference, okay? Also, time and space dimensions are important, and it helps to consider how to make an optimal decision of what would be appropriate when. But I think more importantly is also that you consider remote work and hybrid work challenges and opportunities to design something that is best suited for your context. So, as I said, some people reported definitely higher rates of productivity and work-life flow um, when they're working remotely. Well, it just doesn't work for other people. For some people, um, they get more autonomy when they can choose. When do I need to do my work and balance that with family responsibilities or other things that they want to do? Um, for other people, uh, th th there's also a preference for your personal style. For me personally, as I said, I'm a bit of an extrovert. So I, everything around me attracts my attention. So what I tend to find is if I'm in an office environment, I'm easily distracted. And also I'm a bit of a people's person. So I spend more time walking around and chatting with everybody, not actually getting my work done. Although engaging with people is also getting my work done. Uh, but on another way. So when I need to do research or when I'm busy writing, I'm actually better off if I sit at home because there's no distractions at home. But for some of my colleagues, they might have little kids at home or they might have um, a busy household. So they prefer to come into the office and there they get more focused work done. Um, so th these are some of the things we need to, to consider. When we also look at the research, um, there are some clear dimensions or factors that can contribute your level of performance as also and also your level of well-being when you're working remotely. Um, so, for example, we found that um, your level of self-discipline can play an influence, and, and self-discipline is not a good or bad thing. Some people just they tend to procrastinate. Um, and if you're a procrastinator, you do need a little bit of checking up and control and somebody to just guide you. Um, so for people with a lower level of self-discipline, remote working is not the optimal um, way of working. But we also find other characteristics. For example, your performance or your level of wellness when you're working remotely can be influenced by things like social support. Remember, I asked you, how, how many of you feel connected to your colleagues? And not just from a work point of view, but that you can feel you can reach out to somebody. If you're not in a good space, you can speak with your colleague or your boss or your peer. Um, so the level of social support that we experience has an influence. Job autonomy is also important. If you are working in a very tight process where there's a number of crossover or collaboration points, it is very difficult to work because um, in isolation because you have a number of touch points with individuals. That doesn't necessarily mean remote work or hybrid work is out of the question, but it does mean we have to make the te technology work better for us. And I'll talk a little bit about that later. Um, things like your workload, the level of trust in the organization, not just trust between you and your um, direct supervisor, but also the trust in the team. So remember, you're not there physically to connect and check up on each other. Um, and then the resources that you have um, available. Um, the two things that always stands up for me as challenges that I always highlight, um, and that has to do with monitoring and presenteeism. In terms of monitoring, the verdict is still out there in terms of what works best. As I said, for some people that tend to be procrastinators, and it's not a negative thing, it's just you you get distracted. You A lot of things attract your uh, attention and then you get a bit unfocused. So it's not necessarily an, a, a negative thing, but it, if it is in your personality style, 
it is something to be aware of. So if you tend to be a procrastinator or you struggle with self-discipline, you might prefer a different way of working. If you have a high uh, level of self-discipline and you can focus, uh, you could probably easy, easily work remotely. Um, in terms of monitoring as well, the important thing is to set clear goals. In a remote work context, we cannot work on hours. It's not about how many hours, it's about what was your output? Um, what are you gonna be measured? What contribution are you making to the organizational success? Um, so how we set those goals and targets and how we are able to achieve them plays a much greater role if we want to become a little bit more flexible and open with the way we work. Um, in terms of monitoring again, as I said, some people like the check-in to keep me on track. They like a, a weekly check-in with my boss to just connect and see in terms of goals, are we on track? Um, and one thing that the, the research shows is if you have a high need for supervision and socialization, then you're probably not cut out for remote e-working. Um, the other challenge, as I mentioned, and if you remember a few a while back, I spoke about wellness um, and, and boundaries. Uh, something like presenteeism is also starting to become a little bit problematic. And it's sometimes a bit difficult to spot it um, via uh, the internet. So, so presenteeism is when you show up for work, but you're technically sick, you should be booked off on sick leave. Um, but because we're not really taking leave, we're not going anywhere, we're, not, we're at home anyway. So I'm gonna log in and I'm gonna carry on working. But physically and emotionally, you are not there. You might even be on meds that makes you drowsy. So you are not fully present and you're not fully productive. So that is what we call presenteeism. And, and that can lead to all kinds of challenges because first of all, if the manager or the team doesn't know that you are actually not well, but you are there, they are gonna pick up that you're not fully there. You're not quite present. And because they don't know you're not well or you, you should really be booked off, they can have a negative um, uh, perception of your level of productivity and engagement and being connected, being present. Um, that could lead to all kinds of other challenges. For example, um, you might have a delay in your response, a delay in your performance. The manager might misinterpret this as you defiant, um, and then the manager might become punitive, and that just drags you further down into um, a shutdown state. And that could just lead to a vicious cycle, and it can have a knock-on effect on, on your team members. So those are some of the, the, the challenges, but also the opportunities. Um, and then just in terms of what a work model is, for a successful structural shift to a hybrid model, it is important that we have both individual as well as organizational readiness. Oftentimes we underestimate this. All of us were forced into remote work. I have a laptop, I have data, I might have earphones, I'm good to go. Oh, they, they just got us onto Teams. So suddenly we're all in this Teams environment and we're good to go. Now we are remote workers. No, you're just somebody that can use technology. To optimally make a hybrid work model work, we have to be ready at an individual level and we have to be ready at an organizational level. The individual and organizational readiness pillars um, serves as a guiding framework to ensure that the people and not people, but every individual is ready to work remotely if that's where we're going, if that's the choice that we make. And for individual readiness, you have to consider your physical, your mental well-being, as well as your physical infrastructure. And you have to take, you have to own that. It is your responsibility. From an organizational point of view, it is not just about providing technology and having lots and lots of meetings to check in on people. It is about 
what is the organizational purpose? Does it fit into the uh, whether we're human centric um, organization? What is our vision? What is our style and our leadership culture in the organization? How do we work? Um, are we very process driven or are we task orientated? Uh, what enabling environment is there? Okay, so there's a number of things to consider in terms of the hybrid work model. And then lastly, so if you are now sold on, firstly, what is a hybrid work model? And you believe that this is something to consider and you being the collective role as an organization, but also you at an individual level, because it is your choice. Your life is your responsibility. So if you sold that a hybrid way might be something to look at in the future, and you know why you're doing it and what it is. The question now to answer is how do we think about optimizing a hybrid work model? So a reimagined work model will consider different dimensions from the people, the work and organizational perspective. The people perspective considers the needs and the circumstances of the worker and it also empowers people for extreme flexibility. For example, you will consider your management practices and styles, as well as the organizational culture, including symbols and rituals to support a hybrid model. Um, you do want to intentionally embed cultural rituals and symbols into the hybrid model design and not necessarily only on location. Um, you have to empower leaders and teams to optimally work in and manage and lead in a hybrid model. So as an individual as well, I often see uh, hybrid meetings and we have, uh, well, very recently we had a session with the EXCO team, all in person at a venue in Johannesburg and one EXCO member was out of the country. It was very important for us to set it up in a way that that was a truly hybrid session. So there was a big screen in the room to project the, whatever presentation had to be done. But there was a second screen where the individual's um, face was projected all day. She was there. She was present. We could see the room she was sitting in, um, the movements she was making. She we had to set up cameras to capture the entire room so that she could see who's speaking. Uh, she could hear who's speaking. Um, so you have to be very mindful. If you're leading that meeting or chairing or facilitating, you have to be cognizant to check in and look at the person. And oftentimes we look at the screen instead, we look at the screen instead of at the camera, but we have to look that person in the eye and say, did you catch that? Did they speak loud enough? Are you with us? Do you have a comment? Is, so, so you have to connect. And oftentimes I see people just forget about those that are on the screen and they carry on in a conversation without engaging them as well. Um, as an individual, you also have to take accountability for that. So if you are going to, if your preference is to work remotely, but work with a hybrid team, you have to take the responsibility. I work for an organization, as Andile said, I teach at the business school in Cape Town, but I actually live in KwaZulu-Natal. I have, it's on me to make sure I build relationships with my colleagues that, are, that I'm not with in an office. Um, I have to connect. I have to be on a Teams platform and reach out to people. Um, if I prefer to, to dial into a meeting instead of being present, I have to make sure my video is on. I am in the meeting, I'm present, I am engaged. I'm not multitasking and doing 10 other things. So I have a responsibility. Uh, secondly, the work perspective would then consider job tasks, um, what work is required, on-site um, critical drivers for productivity like energy focus, level of coordination and cooperation between members in a process. Um, we also know that digital overload is a real thing and it's climbing. If, you, if you're on Microsoft Office, you, if you use um, the, the Office Suite, 
you get a daily and a weekly report to show how much online time do you have and where do you use your time. I would recommend you, you consult those reports. So as managers and team leaders, we need to actively think about how do we introduce more asynchronous collaboration. So we spend less time in online meetings, rather read an email or read a report, but then have a discussion instead of just a report. Um, lastly, the work perspective promotes a human-centric organization, um, and it looks at the work design. It reframes the workplace as a tool for engaging employees. So the workplace doesn't become a location, it becomes a tool for engagement. Um, the organizational perspective also considers the internal and external um, organization ecosystem, and that is things like legislation, like we've seen with lockdown, there was policy and rules for how we can conduct, but it also looks at the bigger ecosystem and what the future is. We don't know if this is the last pandemic, we don't know when we're going to be forced into lockdown. So these type of considerations make us more proactive instead of responding. Um, and we have to become tech savvy. We need to know how to use technology smarter and not get overwhelmed by technology, but let the technology work for us. So we have to invest in training and development. Um, critical considerations at an individual level. So what I'd leave with you is to ask yourself, can I adequately manage my boundaries? Am I optimally achieving my performance while effectively collaborating with my team? Am I managing my physical, emotional, and workplace wellness for optimal work-life flow? And am I an organizational citizen? Am I playing my part to care for colleagues, for peers, and even for my leader? The future, as I said, is um, and it's something we've been playing a lot with. Uh, we've recently launched a book, as Andile um, noted, where we looked at the future world of work. And we know that the future world of work is going to consist of hybrid, location agnostic, um, organizational models of automation, skilled people, collaborative teams. And these teams will work vertically across the value chain, um, putting positive influence in the organization and the environment and the society at large. And um, at the end of the day, we have to inform ourselves, we have to get the knowledge, we have to learn from others, but only you and only Bro can decide what is the best way to go about this what do you want to do why and how you want to do this uh, for yourself and for your organization thank you so much Andile I'm gonna stop there thank you Natasha for an insightful discussion and what a pleasure it's been just to listen and and I think understand the topic really well and you've given us really good perspective on a very relevant topic for us so I think if there's any questions or comments um, you can put them in the Q&A section or in the chat section. But we do have a question already, um, Dr. Natasha, so I'll go straight into it. Is hybrid work linked to burnout? Has there been any research around the topic? And can we actually see a link between hybrid work and burnout? I, I think <laughs> my personal view and what the research says is it would be an oversimplification to make that link. I think um, work and burnout is a little bit more complex. Uh, so to try and make a direct link as a done deal would be um, irresponsible. I think when you're working remotely, and I think a few a few core series back, I spoke about managing boundaries and managing your wellness. Right. I think when you work remotely and because you are so dependent on technology, there's a greater responsibility to care for wellness. Um, we, we sit much more uh, because in the office, we walk That's to another true. office. Now we click to another office. So, so you have a much greater responsibility to care for yourself, to manage your boundaries, uh, 
to to work with the technology, let the technology work for you and not you working for it. Um, so there is, yeah, there, there's definitely a possibility that it could um, inform burnout, but it's not a clear relationship. Uh, what we have seen, obviously, in the last 18, 19 months that uh, wellness, uh, wellness has come to the spotlight and cases of burnout has been on the increase, but we have to be careful to attribute it only to remote work. We have to remember we've been living through a pandemic. Right. We've been living through massive change. Just moving your office to home is not as simple. It was a major change that we went through and that caused more stress. Um, yeah, I think that's the best I can answer that. But thank you, Natasha. So what I'm hearing is that we are personally accountable for how we manage our time. Yes, we have to work. Yes, we have to deliver for the companies that we work for, for Brawl, for your manager, for your team's output. But you are accountable in terms of how you manage yourself in that context of hybrid work. And of course, the organization has a responsibility, but I always start with the self. Um, but and, and as we've seen in Brawl, there's been a lot of attempts to, to try and manage wellness within. So, so the organizations are doing things, but we also have to take responsibility for ourselves. Wonderful. I've got another comment here. It's quite long. Um, it says, do, do you feel um, that the answer on the way forward is quite urgent as past waves and anticipated upcoming waves are very disruptive? This week, people all work from home. Next week, everyone has to pack up and work remotely. The packing up and unpacking is very time consuming and unsettling for me personally. This is what Anonymous says, as I work very systematically. Mm -hmm. I think Anonymous has asked and answered the questions. I, I agree fully. And that's why what we're trying to do with this is get ahead of it. So we are, we are stepping back and say, we've been caught of God. COVID hit all of us. Uh, we were forced into a remote work situation. Remember, not everybody. Um, so suddenly we had a bit of hybrid work going on. Uh, there was a lot of insecurity and leaders had to do the best they could within this ambiguous context to just keep the companies afloat. You know, just for, for me, if you've survived, it is the bigger you've been successful in the last 18 months. But I'm saying we don't always have to be reactive. We can learn from these things. We can step back and say, what do, how do we imagine the future? And what type of future can cater for as many possible scenarios that we can think of? We will never be able to account for all the scenarios. But now, now we've learned something. So I agree 100% with Anonymous. This is the time now to reimagine our work models um, so that we can, if another wave hits us, we don't have this in, out, in, out, and we're sitting like victims waiting. Is Thrill gonna lock us in or put us out? Yeah, yeah. Wonderful, I've got another question here, Natasha. Is what tips can you share with Brawlies um, to deal with the challenges and opportunities for an individual working in a hybrid way? For an individual, so, so I'll talk a lot so more from my personal experience. Yes, yeah. So for my from my pers because I've got a lot of experience in this. Uh, I was one of those few people that were very happy with the lockdown because it forced everybody in remote work, and it suddenly clicked on to people that it is possible. I've been trying for more than ten years to convince my clients I don't have to fly down to Joburg to do an hour project management meeting doesn't make sense. Project management is something you can track on a tool. We can have a quick Skype check-in. Um, suddenly, we were all locked in and everybody figured out the technology can work for us. Um, so if, if you, the hybrid worker, if you're not in the office, in, in fact, both ways, I think we have to be a little bit more sensitive around the process of engagement. So remember, a meeting is not a a list of agenda items that we have to tick off. A meeting is an engaging process where you're trying to uh, introduce voice, you're trying to get ideas in, you're trying to get everybody to participate, you want joint problem. There, there's a purpose for being together. So think of that engagement as a process, how best to facilitate the process. And then whether one person's on site or outside, 
think about how do you keep that connection, like I shared with the EXCO session now. How did we make sure that EXCO members part? Uh, for me as a hybrid worker, as I said, it does take a little bit more to make sure you, you network and you build you build what we call social capital. So if I'm not going to see you every day in the office, um, make time. I do a lot of virtual coffees. I, I I sit in an all day conference and I do lunches as part of that. I take my laptop outside. I go sit in the garden. I eat my lunch with my friends or my colleagues, and we we socialize like we would have done in a normal conference. Um, so so you have to invest in social capital. Uh, it's a new way of connecting and collaborating. That's why in the poll, in the quiz I asked the questions: How many people are socially connected? Um, and make the technology work for you. They, uh, we have to learn. We must remember: just because we all have teams doesn't mean we've actually been trained in this. I was just telling Amma earlier. I'm still amazed how many people are on Outlook, but they don't know how to go and look at availability to schedule people for a meeting. They, they don't know how to use a planner. They don't know in Teams, if my button is red, it means I'm busy. So don't poke in there, don't call me. Uh, but I can go on all day about this topic. One last question or comment. If, the, if my team is predominantly working from the office and we have an option to either work from home or at the office, do I have a risk of being ostracized by not being at work? Um, am I, is, is, is FOMO real? Um, am I missing out on a particular team dynamic? Will I be seen as being lazy, not applying myself when everyone is back at the office and yet I've chosen to stay at home and exercise my right to work in a hybrid model? It is a risk, definitely. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Initially, until this becomes the culture, the way we do things, uh, not just in our company, but in life in general, um, it is not the, it's not the norm yet. So if in, in any situation, remember any situation where you, the outlier, the odd one out, there, there will be risk. So if you, the outlier in terms of working remotely, the, the onus is almost going to be on you to make sure you connect, you uh, invest in the social capital. Um, I would say you have to, there will, there is a need for physical, there's certain things that is better done in person. Um, so, so I don't, 100% remote isn't ideal. Um, but, but yeah, there, there's going to definitely be some growing pains. One last, last question. If companies decide that this hybrid model doesn't work for them, and yet I'm working in that company and I really would like to pursue this. I think you touched on this earlier. Where does one strike a balance? Is, does that mean I need to start typing out my letter of resignation? How do, how do we have a happy medium where I'm, I'm happy with my work environment um, and the company is getting what they need to get out of me? Because at the end of the day, we are still at work. Yeah. So I'm going to ask that as truthfully as I can. That this is the biggest conversation I'm having with businesses right now. We, we're not doing research, we're having conversations. Because just like we've seen now, the future is definitely a lot more techno technologically enabled. Uh, it is going to be there. However, the transition is big. So, uh, in fact, it was Josh earlier when we were saying, he said, a lot of companies are talking this, but uh, companies are just telling everybody to come back to the office. And unfortunately, Andeles, because it's the easier thing to do, to make hybrid work is going to be difficult. Because as I said, on, on an individual and organization level, there are so many elements you have to consider. So it is tough. Um, it is going to take a lot of work and a lot of investment from organizations to make this work. We know that there's organizations that's doing it and they uh, they um, have the benefits now. Um, at an individual level, internationally, we're seeing it. There's, I don't know if you've read about the great migration. The, it, it is a thing. It is real in, in the Americas and in Europe. People are resigning. They say the great resignation. They say, hey, I've now moved to the coast because I can do my job from here. Why are you forcing me to come back? 
And if companies are doing it, they resign. Because as I said, with this technology, new type of opportunities have come on board. So there's new jobs. Um, so that is a risk and it is especially a risk with high skilled, high posed and high skilled and uh, certain professions. In South Africa, it's not necessarily our reality. Uh, we, do, uh, we do have a high unemployment rate and that is why I appeal to organizations, your, the risk employees that you don't, can't afford to lose, they, they've got a lot more autonomy in this regard. Um, so, so yeah, I think that's the best way I can answer it. It's not easy, but it's definitely that, worth it. Appreciate that. So in order to make hybrid work, we have to put in the work. And with that, I'd like to close the session with a big, broad thank you to you, Dr. Natasha, for affording us your time today. Rollies, please join us for our next core series session next week on the 23rd of November. And keep an eye out on your inbox for more information from Royal Cares. Thank you so much, everyone, and thank you for joining us.